B.C. But he is also talking at the same time about the coming Mashiach. Now, what I'm saying here, and I think, I think the context bears me out, Isaiah 7, what it's saying here is that we're not simply talking about a prophecy to King Ahaz. The prophecy that was given to him, we see many indications that, that it reaches far beyond this king. One last point. The Messiah being God. There are many prophecies in, in the Tanakh that indicate Messiah is going to be God. You believe that the Messiah is going to be born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Micah 5.2 says that of Bethlehem shall come forth the one who's going to be king. And you know what it says about him? It says about him that his goings forth have been of old from everlasting. In other words, the child's going to be born, but he always existed. He always came from everlasting. There are so many examples, even in Torah, of God coming as a human being. Look at uh, Yaakov wrestling with an angel who turns out to be God, and he named the place where he wrestled with this angel, Peniel. Why? Because he declared that he saw the face of God. Or take the three, the three men who came to Abraham when he was sitting by the oaks of Mamre. And he fed them a meal, and it turned out that two of them were angels who went to Sodom to spy out what was going on. And one of them remained to discuss matters. After having this meal, remained to discuss matters with Abraham. And this individual is identified as Yud Vav Yud. Hey, vav hey. In other words, God Himself in the flesh. You mixing between. We are. You are giving an example from angels, and you refer that the angels are God. That's so what it says. no, that's not what it says. The angels brought a message from God. They didn't say anywhere that the angels are God. Plus, plus, I'm having a. a, a serious problem. Why? Because if you ignore question number one and you address question number two it's not going to prove anything why because we cannot go to question number two when we stuck with question number one so what do you what are you referring to you say okay I don't have an answer about these contradictions I do not know why they refer to the father and they try to prove that he's a grandson of King David when we, when yet Thank you. My name's uh, Rich. I'm a friend of Michael's. That's what he, he invited me down here. I'm sorry. He, that's. I think that's my and Michael's fault. Michael can tell you, man to man, I have been pleading with him for three days. Please give me Rabbi's phone number so Danielle and Rabbi can speak, so they can both make this as fruitful as possible to everyone, so there will be no hidden questions. I apologize. That's my fault. Maybe I should have been more forceful. But you said you can't move on to question two without question one. Had this phone conversation... No, 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 that's not... Maybe you didn't... I did not mean what you... No, no, wait. No, no, no. No, I have no problem of him saying I don't have the answer, right? And I will, I will come back to you when I will be able to come back with the answer. And then we move on. And we don't have a problem. But every time I'm asking a question, he refers to different things. And I, we, I just heard him for more than 20 minutes about a different subject. But uh, just pay attention. We were arguing about his name, Emmanuel, for maybe half an hour when I didn't even give 3% of what I have here. So I mean, obviously we're going to need 20 meetings in order for me just to ask some simple questions. But it's okay. I'm going to try to ask sh the shorter questions because I understand what you say. All right, so the, the point is like this. I'm expecting you, please, to come back to me at your convenience, not today, with the answers, how is it possible that there are 25 mistakes in a book that claim to be from God? It's impossible that God made mistake in a text. This is, we conclude that. Question number two, if Jesus is the son of God, who needs to waste time to prove from King David all the way to Joseph when we say Joseph is not the father? Third question is 
please exp that's a new one please explain me how do you have more than 150,000 different versions to the New Testament? You have today, if you want the source, I have it, I will give you the source. Please explain me how there are more than 150,000 different texts. Okay, that's question number three. Question number four, please tell me, how is it possible that in the New Testament it says that Jacob went to Egypt with 75 people when everybody agreed that the Torah say that Jacob went to Egypt with only 70 people? Okay, please write it down. I'm going to make it a little bit slower for you to make yourself the comments. So that was question number four. Question number five, five please tell me, from all the religions in the world, you know what, I should say it differently. From the three major religions, because I do not know 80,000 religions and cults. That's not my purpose in life. But from three religions, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, please show me, uh, there's one prophecy in Christianity. Islam never gave one prophecy. It's interesting that the Muslims call Prophet Muhammad when yet I promise you search in the entire Quran, there's not even one prophecy in the entire Quran. Prophecy means a clear message for, very for a very long time, hundreds of years or thousands of years later, that a person had no indication that something like this is logical to happen, but he came and described a complete prophecy. Christianity has one prophecy. The Christians write, if you want the source, I'm saying everything now by heart, but if you want the source, it will take me a minute to give you the pages where it is in the New Testament. But I'm sure you're aware of it already. So, please, it says over there that the Jews will never return to the Holy Land. When we ask the former Pope that just died about a few months ago, we ask him, how do you explain that there is one prophecy in the New Testament that say the Jews, God left the Jews after the destruction of the second temple, that's what you claim in your books. And it says clearly over there that the Jews will never return to the Holy Land. Every blind person knows today that there are approximately six, seven million Jews living in Israel, more or less. There are many Jews. We are not talking about the state of Israel. We are not in politics. There's nothing to do with the state of Israel. They say Jews will not return to the Holy Land. So the Jews return to the Holy Land. Question number, what is it, seven? Question number seven is, please tell me, the, prophet, the prophecies throughout the Bible, there are many, many prophecies that speak on time of Messiah. All of them, with no exception, describe that in the time of Messiah, the Jews will have great life. The enemies would leave them alone. There will be no war. The Jews will not suffer from anyone. Nobody ever suffered. The Jews never suffer more than the time that Jesus lived, in the time of the Romans. In his lifetime, millions of Jews were dead. Millions. Up to that time, so many millions of people died from the time of Babylon, 600 years before him, from the time of Nebuchadnezzar, and his time when the Romans came to Israel and slaughtered the Jews daily, every day, and destroy, destroyed the Holy Temple, there was one of the worst time in Jewish history. Since then until today, we have not even one indication of what the Bible said that the Messiah will do for us, that, J, that Jesus did for us. Not even one, not two. There are many, many signs that the Messiah will do. A, I don't have the time now to start listing all these prophecies, but you know about all the prophecies that speak for the future in the time of Mashiach. I gave you three or four. I can give you more if you insist. But none of those indications occurred in his time. Now, the Messiah is supposed to save the Jews from all the nations. And all the nations will come to Jerusalem to learn from the Jews' Torah. Now tell me please, a person that could not save himself when the Romans put him and hung him on a cross, his words to God was begging God to save him. And the Romans were telling him, no, save yourself. 
Let's see if you're going to be able to save yourself. He could not save himself. How can he save us? He couldn't help himself. Plus, it says that the Messiah in one of the prophecies will have children, will have descendants. 